What's up guys, Eli here, back for uh, part two of my Lovecraftian Movies uh, video series. Um, I decided that this is going to be a four-parter, um, but this, this is going to be a direct continuation to the last one. So we're still in the same category. Um, we're still talking about movies that are, that kind of range from, most people consider these, most, most people that are into this shit consider all of these to be Lovecraftian movies. Um, my opinion is some of them, some of them, yes, I think are, are sort of obvious. And then some of them, I think it's a little bit of a reach, but that's, um, that's like my opinion, man. But anyways, we're going to start off with Citadel. Citadel is a cool Irish movie from 2012. Um, and I haven't seen a ton of Irish movies, if I'm being honest. Um, I do, there are a few that I really like, but I'm sure I'm missing out on a bunch. So if I have any Irish viewers, uh, clue me in. Anyways, so... Uh, in this movie, in the Citadel, the main character's uh, pregnant wife uh, is murdered by this mysterious cult uh, who later come back and uh, they seem to want his child. They seem to show some interest in her. So obviously, yes, uh, the baby lives. Uh, the woman does not. It is, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty brutal and it's brutally fucking sad as well. Um, so there seem to be some supernatural elements here. Um, there's this mysterious abandoned building in their town called the Citadel, uh, where the cult uh, seemed to come from. Though it is uh, it is set in modern times, um, the super bleak atmosphere um, is also part of where the Lovecraftian vibes come in for me. Um, it, it almost looks post-apocalyptic due to the settings, which I think is kind of also a, uh, a kind of in its own way addressing extreme poverty. So I think that's a theme. Number two is going to be Super Deep from 2020. Uh, Super Deep is a Russian movie, um, one of the one of the newer ones, if not the newest movie on this list. Um, now I consider this uh, I consider this movie on this list. I consider it to be a little bit of a stretch, but some people some people see it, um, some people may not. But uh, where you're seeing the Lovecraftian elements, I think. Other than other than the monsters, the monsters are very kind of uh, John Carpenter esque, um, kind of reminding a lot of people of the Thing, which might be you know why it makes this list. Uh, but other than that, um, I think it's possibly in the fungi that this movie is definitely based off. Uh, without spoiling, it is definitely based off fungi, which I gotta say, Lovecraft did that once as well. In fact, he may have done it more than once with like a mysterious fungi. Um, other than that, you know, like I said, the finding of, of the mysterious unknown creatures, um, this movie takes place. It's, it's yet another movie where there's a team of people uh, drilling deep, deep, deep into the earth and encountering, you know, encountering creatures that, that have never been seen uh, to mankind. Um, other than that, I think there's a nice helping of, of you know, Cronenberg-esque body horror. And like I said, you know, definitely the John Carpenter-esque elements um, that... that definitely remind us of the thing um like i said a little bit of a stretch here but i think there are some elements that could could kind of sway me to consider it a lovecraftian movie um i'm not quite there but i've also only seen this movie once so uh yeah super deep what do you guys think about that one number three is going to be pan's labyrinth from 2006 now, this one is directed by Guillermo del Toro, who's one of my favorite directors of all time, and you're going to see his name pop up on, on, on these, uh, these movie lists, uh, let's just say frequently. Um, Guillermo del Toro is uh, very, he's a very big Lovecraft fan. Out of, out of all the, you know, the famous you know, movie directors, he is one of, if not the most um, uh, inspired by Lovecraft. He talks about it all the time in interviews, and it, it shows in his films, whether it's intentional or not. Um, he's done movies where he, he uses blatant Lovecraft references, and some where he doesn't, but I feel like even the ones where he doesn't use blatant Lovecraft references, you know, the, the influence is still very much there, um, such as the case with, with Pan's Labyrinth. Um, this movie is considered to be a classic by many, many people, and I would highly agree with that. It is a fantastic movie. Uh, it is a Spanish film. Um, 
it's just it's beautifully done it's beautifully acted it's beautifully written uh, and this is commonly referred to as one of the more Lovecraftian movies of all time but I do I kind of disagree with that um, I mean most if not all of del Toro's movies have some underlying Lovecraft influence but sometimes it comes to the surface uh, more than it does in others um, the mystical realm here in this movie uh, does seem like something Lovecraft could have came up with, but, I mean, he didn't. Um, what uh, what I like most about this movie, other than just the movie, I, I, what, probably what I like most about it was what I like most about most of uh, Guillermo del Toro's movies is the creatures. His creatures here are fantastic if you haven't seen them um, he as as usual for del Toro he you know he he adds a lot of practical effects Number four we're gonna be talking about Kronos from 1993 another Guillermo del Toro movie and another Spanish movie um, much like his earlier work um, now this is essentially a vampire story and to, to my knowledge, if I remember correctly, I don't think Lovecraft ever did anything with vampires, but had he, you know, if he did, it would have probably felt something like this. Um, I would uh, go as far as to say that this movie is a bit more Lovecraftian than Pan's Labyrinth um, in the storyline itself. Um, I, I would say H.P. Lovecraft's Cool Air short story is uh, surely an influence here. So yeah, Kronos from 1993, number four. And for number five, we're going to be talking about Under the Skin from 2013. Um, I only recently saw this movie for the first time, and I so I had heard that it had um, a lot of Lovecraftian elements um, from everything I had read. And at the beginning of the movie, and as I'm watching it, I'm kind of debating that. But by the end of it, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, so this movie has a lot of Lovecraftian elements that a lot of movies are missing. Uh, most importantly... The unknown. Uh, so many movies are ruined by over-explaining, and I think that uh, we forget that some things are, you know, much more scary when we don't know everything about what's going on. Um, there are two main characters in this movie. Um, they aren't human. Um, you don't really know who they are, what they are, or where where they came from. Uh, the ending feels particularly Lovecraftian to me. Uh, as it could have easily been taken from one of his short stories. So, uh, Under the Skin, 2013. Um, I'd also add that this is one of uh, one of my favorite movies from recent years. Number six, we have the uh, highly anticipated Mandy from 2018, uh, directed by Cosmos Panatos, who has already made an appearance in uh, the first video that I did. Um, so yeah, like a lot of these, uh, like all of these movies, um, a lot of people consider Mandy to have a very Lovecraftian feel. Um, and after watching it a couple times, I would definitely have to agree. Um, so this is the second movie directed by Cosmos Panatos. Um, his first one was Beyond the Black Rainbow. Like I said, I talked about it already. Um, so we might be onto something here. Um, you know, the violets and purple hues of the movie, uh, which is a stylistic thing that, you know, a, a lot of directors are doing right now, but it's effective in the right place. Um, I, I feel like those colors alone, uh, in their own way, give me a, a Lovecraftian vibe. Um, the you know the antagonist in this movie being a cult leader, very Lovecraftian. Um, the ancient magical device used to summon uh, an alien group of uh, marauders also seems very Lovecraftian to me. Um, sort of a, so, sort of Hellraiser esque as well. Um, which is another movie that a lot of people, you know, consider to be Lovecrafty, and I'm kind of on the fence with that one. Um, the planet in this movie uh, takes place and doesn't even seem to be uh, Earth. Um, uh, it has two moons, which is, uh, you know, gives it gives it a, you know, kind of out of this world feel, kind of alien. Um, it almost uh, it almost seems like it's an alternate reality because some things you see. Uh, do you know are things that you would see on Earth, and some things aren't. Um, the ending, uh, the ending in the movie with the main character 
you know, Nick Cage possibly slipping into insanity. Definitely a Lovecraftian theme. So put that all together. Um, I feel like you have, uh, yeah, a very Lovecraftian movie in Mandy from 2018. Number seven, we have The Fog from 1980. All right, John Carpenter, of course. The Fog, uh, so though considered some, uh, considered by some to have some Lovecraftian atmosphere, um, I kind of have to disagree. I mean, it almost does, and, and in a way it does, but this movie just gives away too much. Um, had The Fog brought with, uh, brought with it some form of like ancient un unexplained evil, that would be perfect. It's totally a Lovecraftian, but instead, we get a, in my opinion, we get a backstory that has more to do with ghosts and pirate curses, and to me, I mean, overall, it's more Scooby-Doo than Lovecraft. Number eight, we have Dead and Buried from 1981. So writer Dan O'Bannon actually stated uh, on this one that he was actually... Uh, confirms actually being influenced by Lovecraft, uh, which is kind of a rarity uh, as far as I know. Um, so yeah, in this movie you got um, the Lovecraftian elements kind of come to place in a uh, mysterious town where people are murdered, and then after that they kind of reappear uh, as town folk after that, just walking around, you know, you know doing things like the rest of the villagers or whatever. Um, <clears throat> You can almost call this a zombie movie, but it, it, it evades a lot of the zombie tropes. Um, so for that reason, um, a lot of people don't consider it a zombie movie. Yet it, it kind of is. To me, it's, it's, it's a clever take on the zombie genre. But um, there is definitely a, a mysterious kind of macabre uh, theme going to it that separates it from all the other zombie movies. And I definitely would say it has an unnerving uh, Lovecraftian atmosphere. Number nine, we have The Keep from 1983. Now, um, I do want you guys to keep in mind that this isn't a personal list of mine. These are movies that um, uh, I found on lists online uh, made by other people. So I decided to go through you know, all the movies that I had in my collection that fit um, those lists, basically. Uh, so if it were up to me, I would probably not have used The Keep. Um, much like The Fog, The Keep is, I don't know, it just doesn't meet the, uh, the requirements for me for being like a true, you know, Lovecraftian movie. Um, so in The Keep, there's an ancient unexplained evil that lays uh, dormant in a keep in the middle of a Romanian village during World War II. Um, Michael Mann directed it, but uh, I'm getting major John Carpenter vibes. Um, and the movie overall, the atmosphere and everything reminds me quite a bit of The Darkness and The Fog. Or not the dark, uh, the Prince of Darkness and the Fog, uh, and the demon in this movie does have kind of a Lovecraftian feel, though I will say once you get to know him a little bit better, he's he's not nearly as intimidating as pretty much any monster or whatever in Lovecraft's uh, stories. Um, I like this movie, pretty good, pretty good, a uh, pretty good watch. Um, I kind of expected it to be a little bit more scary than it is. It's not a very scary movie. But it is a well, uh, well written movie, well acted, and it's just good. Number ten, we have Dark Waters from nineteen ninety four. Uh, Dark Waters is a very cool, obscure movie, uh, kind of like a low budget Italian throwback to uh, classic Italian horror and Lovecraft, both at the same time. Um, pretty much, if you would imagine. Uh, uh, imagine the movie Dagon, or the story Dagon, directed by Dario Argento. Um, so yeah, you're definitely getting um, some serious Dagon and uh, Shadow over Innsmouth vibes in this one. Um, this is the original DVD. This is the first time it was ever released on DVD. But if you want something newer and better, um, get the, I think, a 2017 Severin uh, put, it, put, out their, uh, put out their version. So that probably looks amazing. And I'll probably have to pick that up at some point. But... Uh, yeah, number 10, uh, a movie that I don't ever really hear anyone talk about, Dark Waters. Um, if you're a fan of classic Italian horror and Lovecraft, definitely look into this one. And number 11, we have Event Horizon from 1997. Um, 
also have the uh, little VHS copy. Um, so whenever Cosmic Horror comes up, um, Event Horizon is usually mentioned in the, like the top three. Um, and for that reason alone, uh, Lovecraft definitely comes to mind. But we have to remember that you know, just because a horror movie takes place in space uh, doesn't mean it has connections to Lovecraft in any, any way, shape, or form. I mean, this movie has the, all the key elements. It's got fear of the unknown, you know, the absolute feeling of dread, you know, slipping, in, slipping into insanity. You know, space is an alien, cold, unforgiving place, and Event, event Horizon really brings out the most of all that. And number 12, we have The Endless from 2017. This movie is a little bit new to me. I only uh, I only got it maybe uh, sometime last year, and I've only watched it once. Um, this is a very cool movie, and the two directors here are definitely on my radar. I feel like they have a ton of potential. Um, and and, and the, though I've only watched this once, it is a, it's a pretty heady movie, and it needs at least two or three watches to really um, to really break it down. Um, so I'm working on that. Um, so this movie does have a Lovecraftian feel while keeping it kind of more in the sci-fi realm. Um, that said, the horror elements are always lingering in the distance. The feel of impending doom is always near. And the fact that whatever the threat here is, we never really get to find out what it is. Or if anyone in the movie even really knows what it is. Um, all that combined with a religious cult... Uh, give people all the reasons they need to call this a Lovecraftian movie. And number 13, we have Prince of Darkness from 1987. John Carpenter again. He makes this list for the, what, the third, second or third time? Third time? Anyways, I got the cool Steelbook version, of course. Um, yeah, not a whole lot to say here. Um, you know, the apocalyptic feel, um... Uh, and the threat of ancient evil, you know, draw parallels to Lovecraft. I debated uh, whether or not I was going to put this one on here, but after further investigation, after rewatching it, um, yes, I definitely get a Lovecraftian feel. Um, very underrated movie. Check out Prince of Darkness. And number 14, we have Spring from 2014. Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead make their second appearance in this video. Um, so this movie is Lovecraftian in a unique way, as it, it's a bit of a love story. Um, without spoiling it, I'll just say that, you know, the movie involves an ancient creature that looks right out of a Lovecraft story. Um, and if he had written a, a love story in his writing style, it very well could have turned out like this. Um, I've only watched it once, but I, I really, I absolutely love this movie. It's honestly one of my favorite movies in recent years. So yeah, check out Spring. And number 15, we have Midnight Meat Train from 2008. Uh, taken from a Clive Barker story, here we have a secret and ancient group of, group of reptilian creatures who have a small group of people who bring them a train full of humans uh, regularly for consumption. Um, not much is explained other than the creatures having been on Earth uh, before humanity. Um, the reptilian creatures with their obscure backstory is uh, what reminds me of uh, Lovecraft. Um, I could see it. I think it's a slight stretch. Um, had just a little bit more been explained, I might lean more in that direction. However, explaining too much, I think, would take away from the mystery. Um, I will say... In this story, uh, in Barker's short story, that he explains a little bit more than he does here in the movie. So, um, it's a cool movie. So if you like it, definitely check out the short story. Clive Barker is an excellent writer. And yeah, Midnight Meat Train. Number sixteen, we have Possession from nineteen eighty one. Um, I'd say this is one of the most Lovecraftian movies that doesn't have actual Lovecraft references or. Um, direct influences. Uh, Sam Neill makes this list three times. We have here is an unexplained alien entity. You got themes of insanity, characters, you know, slowly slipping into madness. No clear explanation of, of what exactly is happening or why. Uh, this is exactly how it should be uh, for a true Lovecraftian atmosphere. Um, there are a lot of sexual themes here, though, which I think would have maybe made um, H.P. Lovecraft himself a little bit uncomfortable. But uh, other than that, um, 
This movie is a must-see for Lovecraft fans. Possession. Check it out. All right, number 17, and last on this particular list, uh, I'm going to throw you guys a little bit of a curveball, and I'm going to go for Rick and Morty. I, I grabbed season two. Not sure why. But anyways, um, so as uh, as Rick and, For Rick and Morty fans know, Cthulhu has appeared in the opening credits of of. of Every single Rick and Morty episode from you know starting from day one, I would think I think some Cthulhu myth mythos elements would be really perfect for the show, as it is a very sci-fi based uh, sci-fi based cartoon, um, and it crosses over constantly into horror. Um, yeah, I mean even the character Rick uh, himself was modeled after uh, Doc Brown from Back to the Future, but I could also see a little bit of Herbert West, uh, a la Jeffrey Combs from Reanimator as well. It, just my personal uh, opinion. Um, I feel like um, I feel like there are some Lovecraft influences going on in this in this show, and they have been teasing uh, recently in season f six. Yeah, I think the upcoming season six, they've been teasing um, actually bringing Cthulhu into the show. I guess in uh, I think it's in the final episode of season five. Um, you get to see what appears to be a little baby Cthulhu. So, Rick and Morty, Lovecraftian cartoon? I think so. All right, guys, we made it to the end of Tier 1. Uh, the, next, uh, the next video is going to start Tier 2, where it, I'm going to go into movies that show uh, that contain actual Lovecraft elements and references. Um, so not direct adaptations. That is going to be tier three. But uh, yeah, like I said, just um, like uh, like mention mention of you know um, Lovecraftian characters and stuff like that. It's gonna be a it's gonna be fun. We're getting that much closer to you know the actual ad adaptations. Uh, but tier two um, actually has some of my personal favorite movies of the series. So um, yeah, stay tuned, guys.